Hello everyone, T Pow here and welcome to my 2019 bullet journal setup. I have my bullet journal right here inside its new cover. It's ready to go and so am I. So let's just get right into the video. So as we start off, I have my new pristine white Scribbles That Matter A5 dotted journal. Once you read the word I'm writing, you can probably guess what my theme is. I went with France as my theme because it is low key the theme of my new office which I'm very excited about and for this page I used a blue Tombow dual brush pen in the color numbered 373 and then for the little details I used a dusty rose colored 772. For my 2019 at a glance page I wanted to keep the drawing simple for my 2019 at a glance page i wanted to keep everything simple so at the top i drew a minimalist line drawing of the paris skyline and i thought that was really cool and something really easy to include that you know screams paris without being too difficult to draw obviously the at a glance page takes forever to do but it's totally worth it because i find myself referring to it all the time and it is the most nerve-wracking page because I feel like if you make a mistake on this, it's just so heartbreaking. I give a lot of credit to everyone I've seen on Reddit who's posted their mistakes because that would kill me slowly inside. To draw the skyline, I just used my Micron 03 pen. I also used that to write in the months and I used an 01 to write in the actual dates. I went back and I highlighted each month just to add a little bit of color. I used the same pink color, but I used a different blue Tombow dual brush pen in the color 451. And I don't know why, but whenever I finish this page, I feel so satisfied. The next page has a little bit of a backstory. When I decided on a French theme, the first thing that popped into my head after the Eiffel Tower, of course, was a cute bicycle with flowers in the basket. I don't know why I associate this with France so much because I see this kind of design everywhere nowadays, but I just knew I had to have it incorporated somewhere in my bullet journal. Of course, I picked light blue because that is my favorite color. It's the color of my kitchen and of course the color of my dream car, the Volkswagen New Beetle convertible in Aquarius blue. I'm not the best drawer in the world, but I have to say that I'm very happy with the way this bicycle turned out. It's just cute enough, but it's not super realistic because I feel like everything I draw has like a cartoonish feel to it and I'm totally fine with that. I always say that my mom had absolutely no artistic ability and she could only draw stick figures and my dad can draw like landscapes that look super realistic like a photo and I basically got the mix of that. I can draw but only cartoonish figures. So not complaining, just explaining. So I didn't explain what this page actually is. It is my quote page. I have written the same quote in every single one of my planners since the finale of The Office aired. The quote is said by Pam in the finale. She says, be strong, trust yourself, love yourself, conquer your fears, just go after what you want and act fast because life just isn't that long. That resonated with me so much that I still, to this day, have written it and will continue to write it in every single planner that I ever own. <laughs> now, as you watch this, you're probably like, why is she choosing these colors, especially that brown? But let me explain. What I wanted to do different this year was to choose colors that go with the sentiment of each part of the quote. Be strong is in brown because that represents stability. Trust yourself is in blue because not only does blue mean tranquility or peace, but it can also mean trust. 
I chose to write love yourself in pink rather than red because pink tends to represent sensitivity, whereas red usually indicates passion and drama and that kind of love, like the fiery kind of love that you'd have with your significant other. But pink is more sensitivity and I feel like when you love yourself, it's more you're being sensitive to your needs and you're taking care of yourself. So I chose pink for that. I wrote conquer your fears in orange because orange can represent encouragement and releasing inhibitions so having courage i wrote the longer parts of the quote in that turquoise blue just because i love that color and it matched the bike so no real meaning there but i wrote act fast in yellow because yellow represents optimism and energy that's what all the colors mean so if you looked at this initially and thought Wow, those are some interesting color choices. I hope they make sense to you now. It actually has a deeper meaning than just aesthetics, and I feel like we forget to do that in our bullet journals, especially because we're all posting them on Instagram and Reddit and YouTube, and we're so concerned about how they look and what other people will think of them that we forget that it's supposed to be a personal experience and it's supposed to be unique to us. So I hope we all can remember that as we go through the year Nothing has to be perfect, and every bullet journal is beautiful in its own way. My next page is my goals page. I kept this pretty simple and empty because I want to fill it up with optimistic goals for the year. I never do resolutions because nobody ever keeps resolutions, so I always call them goals, and I do tend to set goals that I feel I can legitimately accomplish in a year and I also try to set really tiny goals so that I can like check them off throughout the entire year and that kind of keeps me motivated to keep going. In the bottom I just drew a little wonky Eiffel Tower. Even though I sketched most of the things out beforehand, they still sometimes can come out wonky. But again, that's my personal touch and I'm not going to worry about it. Next is my future log and I also kept this really simple. I just drew boxes across the top, so for my journal, when you divide it into thirds with a box in between, everything is eight squares wide. In each square, I wrote the month, and then I left a long space underneath to write all of my events or dates to remember. In the bottom left corner of these two pages, I drew a little chair and a table as if it's at a Parisian cafe with a little cup of coffee, because what else would you order at a Parisian cafe? I did the first six months on a two-page spread, and then on the next two-page spread, I finished off the last six months of the year, and in the bottom right-hand corner, I drew, of course, you knew it was coming, a little poodle, a little French poodle. And I would just like to point out that this is the first time I've successfully drawn a dog that didn't look like there was something wrong with its body, so go me. I went back and drew some thin lines between each month just to keep it separated, and that is my future log. Simple, but pleasing. Now, I didn't wanna put every single thing in French because I'm not that fluent, but I do know all the months. So I wanted to have a page that was just in French, and this is that page. I know my pronunciation is not good. Les anniversaires, the birthdays. This is my birthday page. Uh, last year, I included all the birthdays in my future log, but I honestly felt like they fell through the cracks and I have a thing about not sending people birthday cards on time, so that is unacceptable. I need to have a page dedicated to birthdays now and I wrote all of the months in French and I will attempt to pronounce them. Feel free to make fun of me. I know I'm not that good. Janvier, Février, Mars, Avril, my birthday month. May, <laughs> that one's easy. Juin, juillet, out. <laughs> August, September, October, November, and December. I know I am the worst. I've been learning a lot of French lately because I want to go to the 2024 Olympics in France. So I took French in high school. I did not take it in college, but I've continued to learn it as an adult. So I can read it very well and I can write it very well. I'm just not good at actually speaking it in an accent. Okay, give me a break. At least I tried. I'm not saying I'm a French expert. I'm just saying I'm a French enthusiast. 
Next, I wanted to include a page for holidays and not just your typical Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas holidays. I want to celebrate all the fun like National Cheeseburger Day and National Ice Cream Day and National Donut Day and like there's probably others that don't include food but I guess that's just where my head is right now. I want to make sure I never miss another National Cheeseburger Day again. Just like with the birthdays, these need to have their own page because I'm making them a priority. This next page is ironically something that I included in my 2017 planner, but I did not include in my 2018 planner, but it is my cleaning schedule. So basically there's lots of ways to do this, but the way I broke it down is I have weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, and yearly tasks. So the weekly would be like vacuuming, doing the Swiffer, Bi-weekly would be things you only do twice a month, like change your sheets or whatever. Monthly would be things you only do once a month, like clean your ceiling fans. And then yearly would be things you only do once a year. I'm a homeowner now, so it's kind of a lot and it's not very fun to think about all the things that need <laughs> maintaining around the house. But as long as I can keep track of it, I feel much more comfortable having it all laid out so that I'm not worried that I'm missing something. At the top, I drew a little apron and a feather duster and I realized that because I've gone with the French theme that this could be um, assumed that this is like a French made costume, but I wasn't going for that vibe. I guess you could interpret that way if it's something you would like to do, but just know that that's not exactly what I was going for and uh, I'm not trying to make a sexy bujo. Ah uh, yes, next to my cleaning schedule is my other very adult spread. It is my savings jar. This will be my third year using my savings jar. And a few years ago on Pinterest, I found a chart that lets you save $2,000 by putting away an amount every time you get paid, assuming that you get two paychecks a month. Even if you get paid once a week, you could still do this. You just wouldn't be putting away money every single paycheck. You would just do every other. The reason I like it more than just putting away a set amount every month is because it takes into account the times when people tend to spend more money. So at the beginning of the year, when you're like paying off your Christmas presents, you only have to put away $50. But then there's times like in the summer or in the spring when most people aren't spending as much money, it'll go up to higher amounts so that at the end of the year, it ends up being $2,000. Last year I was able to double it and not because I was making more money but really just because I was being a little bit more responsible with my money and now that I have a goal which is my dream car I do want to have the money put away so that when I find it I can buy it. It's not hard for me to do. I do sometimes forget to color it in but I never forget to actually put the money away. So I will link that in the description if you would like to see the chart that I follow or feel free to come up with your own amounts. But I really recommend putting a spread in your bullet journal so you can look forward to coloring it in because now everything's online with money. Instead of just seeing a number go up in your bank account, you can like have a visual of seeing this jar fill up in your bullet journal and it's super satisfying. There's not much to explain about this next page. It's my weekly journal prompts. Usually I just sit down at the end of the day and I write whatever I want to. But once a week, usually on a Sunday, I like to sit down and do a journal prompt. I tend to use the same 52 prompts every year, but because you're only seeing it once a year and so much can change in a year, it makes sense to repeat them because you can see how you've changed and how your priorities have changed from the year prior. And that's really fun to look back at and see what you've written exactly a year ago about that topic. So I don't follow prompts every day, but I do do the same 52 prompts every year. I will link that list in the description below. And the next page is for my running material but I just want to explain a little bit about why these things are in my bullet journal. I used to use several different books at a time. I would have a running journal, I would have a planner, I had a bullet journal on top of that once that wasn't my planner. I would have a diary and I would have a book for just like ideas and thoughts and it was insane because there's no way you can keep up with that many books. And that's just my philosophy. The less 
books or the less journals you have that have information you need, the less information that will fall through the cracks. And that's why I really love bullet journaling is I can make a spread for any occasion. Um, I had like three or four for Christmas. I had all of my shopping lists in one place. I could take it with me to the store. I had all, everything I was gonna make for Christmas, everyone's gift list, no matter where I was, I had the things I needed. I can't imagine having several books and having to remember which information is in which book. Anyway, I am going to fully incorporate my running journal into my bullet journal. And that's where these two spreads come into play. I have my running goals, self-explanatory. I also have a place to write down personal records and milestones because hopefully I'll be making a lot of those this year because I have some pretty lofty goals. My ultimate goal is to run the Boston Marathon. And even though I've been running for a long time, it never was my goal. I just like to finish races. I liked to do fun races. And for some reason, I have decided that I'm at least gonna do a real college try to run the Boston Marathon. Obviously, not this year. Um, I have a few years leading up to that, but my big goal this year, and it will really determine if Boston is an option for me, is to run a half marathon in under two hours. If that doesn't sound hard to you, then you're probably more athletically inclined than I am. Um, but for me, I've done several marathons and even more half marathons, and I have never done a half marathon in under two hours. So that is my goal this year. On the next page, I have a training schedule, which is, I'm not going to be training all the time, but I basically have mapped out sets of weeks that I'll be building a base and then I'll be doing some 5k training and I kind of have a 5k and a 10k race in mind that'll serve as checkpoints to see how I'm working towards the goal of the sub two half marathon. So I'm kind of going to train for those other two shorter races just to see if I can actually achieve the main goal this year. And then at the bottom of the page, I have for the first 26 weeks of the year, my weekly mileage, and that's just going to be a bar chart. And I think one square will equal one mile because I don't think I'm going to be going over like 20 miles in the first half of the year, but I have to double check on that. And if that's the case, then one square will just equal two miles and my weekly mile mileage probably won't go even close to 40, but it might get close to 30. So I have to figure that out before I decide, but I still have time before I get there. So once I finished all of my spreads, I went back to fill out my index and I'll be using the magnetic bookmarks that I mentioned to mark off certain pages that I feel I'll be referencing more often without, you know, having a bunch of stuff sticking out of my notebook. And that is it for my 2019 bullet journal setup. I can't wait to see what everyone's done this year. I feel like every year the community just gets bigger and bigger and it's so exciting to see everyone's different styles and their bullet journals. Thank you so much for watching. Part two is coming out tomorrow, so please subscribe so you don't miss it. And I wish everyone happy holidays and a happy new year and happy planning.